Two bits of quarter plate that I ordered to size are on their way, but they just haven't turned up. And I wanted to do the next stage of this, uh, and I had a little rethink as well—a rethink of a rethink. Um, rather than going with four and a half, four point seven mil, which is quarter plate, I'm going with this instead. Um, this is—you can see the edge. This is three mil, three mil thick, three mil thick plate instead of the quarter plate, which is going to be a bit lighter. They're still going to be heavy, proper heavy, but I was thinking about it that obviously they flop up these footboards when they're not in use, um, and I don't want them so heavy that they just flop down on their own. So you know what I mean. The difference between the weight of this and the weight of you know something that's two mil thicker is you know 40% more weight. So I want to cut down on that. Although it's a Harley and they can take the weight, they're all about that. Um, there's no need to make it excessive, and that's going to be more than enough. I want it thick so I can weld proper strong to it and at the same time it doesn't buckle or bend or twist in the future and it can stand its own shape and stay its own shape without the need for extra bracing. That's the idea. Anyway, there we go. Welcome back. Shut up talking. Let's get on with it. I've got to cut this out now. Cut some foot plates. All right. Um, in every project that I do, I try if I can to include some how-to bit of this or that that could possibly help you because we learn by watching, don't we? Monkey see, monkey do and all that. Um, so just as an idea, I'm making these footboards, these currently, these frames I made the other day, uh, these are 240 long, 240 mil, working in metric on this because it's just big round numbers. Uh, they're 240 mil long and then that part there is 90 mil wide. Now I've spoken to the little fella's dad and he says to me that the heel of his shoe is about 10, is about 7 centimetres across, it's about 70 mil across the heel. This is the boots that he's going to wear, the bike boots that he's going to wear at the moment, because remember he might only be 6 years old, which is only tiny feet, but when they put them in a pair of bike boots that are protective they're going to be bigger. So the sole of the boot is roughly 240 mil long and maybe a bit less and at the heel it's 70 mil across. So what I'm thinking is to make it 100 mil wide, which will give him sideways movement, so it doesn't slip off. You don't want to be just slim fitting. And as far as length is concerned, I'm going to make it about an inch longer than his foot. And that's for a couple of reasons. It gives a little bit of growing room because for the next few years he'll be on footboards. Um, maybe when he gets to 10, 11 years old, he'll be on foot pegs. I don't know, but these are for now, and these are for a six-year-old. So they're going to be about an inch and a half longer than his foot. And his foot at the moment is about seven inches long with the boot on. So we're coming out to nine inches, giving two inches of movement at the front. That's just for boogieing around, really. It's just for moving backs and forwards so that he's comfortable. He can, shoot, he can fidget his feet about on the board, and it won't slip off. It won't be right on the edge all the time. That works quite well. We're going to put a little keep around the back as well so his heel doesn't go any further back. 
or close to the wheel or anything. It's all about the safety, you know what I'm saying? So there we are, they can be 100 wide by 240 long, so I've just got to cut two oblongs, 240 by 100, that's the simple next task. Ain't odd, is it? dust mask. <laughs> Look at that. Better than all that going in your lungs, eh? Now that's got the the basic plate cut roughly to size 240 by 100 mil. That will now weld to that and that will be the surface. So effectively we're bringing we're bringing up the height of the footboard by not a lot, probably about half an inch. It doesn't need to be brought up. We've already measured that. And there we are. Here we are on size, overlaps on all kinds. So now what I'm gonna do now is kind of mock out, or we'll cut these corners off and mock out around there and then make a just a boot print, you know, just like the shape of a footprint so it looks a bit cool. It'd be better than just that, and that's a bit crap. <laughs>
time to set the welder up now, but there's one little calculation that's just got me made. There we go. That's going to weld underneath there. Um, I made this so that this sits uppermost above the peg to give a bit of height and to give a nice flat mating surface for the plate, for the board to weld on all the way around. So I can weld it all the way along, all the way along, and it's really, really strong. Now, obviously, there's just a little calculation to be made. The peg sits 90 degrees to the bike, all four pegs do. So if you look at your pillion peg, fold it down, it sits like that, absolutely straight, 90 degrees to the bike. And that's okay if you're just going to put your foot on a foot peg. But when it's a board, if you put the board on like that, it's going to point directly forward, which is okay. But then the little fella's foot is going to sit on it like that, because all feet naturally point outwards. Unless you're pigeon toed, and I'm with respect to those who might be, um, it's not a natural situation. If your foot naturally always points outwards, especially as he's very small. So as he's very tiny, his feet will come out, his legs will, will come out around the bike, and naturally his feet will point outwards very slightly. So on the boards themselves, the actual footboard is gonna twist out just slightly so that when his foot sits on it, it's dead in the middle. And obviously there's loads of room there for him to move around, but move around in a forward and backward natural direction to his foot. You get on saying. You'll see what I'm saying. So I've got to calculate now just how much rotation I put on this when I tap weld it on uh, and get them obviously both the same because there's nothing worse than when you twist them out and one sits more than the other. That just looks rubbish. Um, so here we go. I think you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Probably not explaining it very well. Basically, the board's got to twist out just a little bit for comfort. Here we go. Let's get on with it. This is when you should have paid attention in maths at school. Always use a grid. Draw a grid. It took about 10, 15 minutes to draw that. Measure it corner to corner so you know that it's an absolutely perfectly square grid. And then you can put them on. Now I need to rotate them both out at exactly the same amount. And I can use the grid for that. So I take two known points at the back, set those on there. That's an exact distance between. Come out to the front and take the two most or well, the two outermost points at the front, equal, equal, and then on the same on the outside. That one's right on the outside, that one's right on the outside, just at the most, the outermost point, a known point again. And as I ground them both together on the sander, both of those are exactly the same shape, and I just turn one over so it's opposed. So we've got two opposed footprints, as obviously you have a left and a right foot, so they'll sit perfectly at the same angle of, um, not elevation, the angle of flare out that they'll have will be exactly the same both sides of the bike. Then I can also make sure that when they bolt onto the bike they sit at the desired angle by getting the frames dead straight. These poke out exactly 90 degrees to the travel direction of the bike. So that's the, the direction of travel of the bike and I can make sure that everything is exactly square and that these line up square. I pick uh, the point at the back of this and the point at the front and just use the grid and there we go. It's ever so easy. You make a dead square job, everything lines up. It's ever so simple. Just took 10 minutes with a Sharpie to make a little grid on a piece of base metal, which I'm also using as a ground. Ain't odd, is it?
try and concentrate quick. Sorry. Okay, three, two, one, go. Right, dirty, dirty. Look at that dust mask. That's <laughs> just. That's in your face. Thanks. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I know it's a dirty old job, this, it really is, but steel fabricating to me is the most rewarding and satisfying pastime you can do in your garage. It really, really is. And there's the sum total of today's fun and game. Six and a half hours at this today, really chuffed with that. I've radiused the frame underneath to give it a little bit of a, a line. I think that's quite smart. I've got to take this end off yet. That just doesn't work. That's the knob off the end of the old foot peg. I've only left it there really because, well, then it's there, isn't it? I can just lop it off if I want to. But having looked at that, now I'm so chuffed with that result so far, I'm actually going to lop that off and radius that end out as well. And that will still be more than strong enough. Honestly, you could stand a fourth bridge on that. That's mad. Check out the world in there, Pen. That is getting better. Damned if I ain't getting better. All the way along there. That sort of welding is good enough for a motorcycle frame. It really is. Even if it's a little bit messy, by the time you've painted over that, that's absolutely superb. Now, obviously, this is going on a beautiful, brand new Harley Davidson Dyna Street Bob Special, and a bike like that deserves more than that showing at the side. It is cool, it's nice. However good the welds are, they're welds, and you don't want welding showing to the outside world, because remember, when they're folded up, they'll be like that. So what I'll do is, like I said, mold them in so you won't see them, paint them all over, and it will look really, really cool. So there's a lot more to do, a lot more grinding and cutting to do, because I ran out of discs today, I ran out of flat discs, check this lot out. I ran out of grinding discs. That's the grinding disc, look at that, that's value for money. Check that one out. That is the grinding disc, it's actually started breaking up. So I've got no materials, I've got to get more discs, I'll get some flat discs, some other materials, then I can finish the fabrication properly and then get stuck into the actual body working. And they're just gonna get a thick coat of the good old tough black paint, which is really resilient, it will last forever. And on the front there, where his foot goes, what we're gonna do is the foot, that is an inch wider than his heel at the moment with his boots on and actually that's big enough for my heel to go in so he's never going to outgrow that in width as far as foot length is concerned though he's about an inch or so at the back or when his foot's at the back he's an inch from the front that's how I've measured it to be so he's got a little bit of growing room and he can always go off the end that's why I haven't got a keep around the front now what we'll do is mold the inside mold all the welds and then on the top I'm going to stick some skateboard tape that's the grip tape that you put on the deck of skateboards and that stuff is fantastic it lasts forever it doesn't wear out and we can just glue that in the top there and you'll have a really grippy surface as well that'll look really really cool perhaps at the end when we're done we'll carve his initials in it as well so it's really really bespoke that's cool isn't it cool excellent right that's that now next one will just be bodywork I'll get straight into the bodywork and then hopefully Fingers crossed, I should be able to finish these in the next video. So this will just be three videos to make these, maybe four at the most, don't know. Just not gonna cut corners purely because of the number of videos. Gonna get them done, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we can finish the next one. Anyone else, Ben? I would say, well done. Well done, oh yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> you wag. <laughs> oh, we need a beer, didn't you? Come on. Let's go to a cold beer, it's been a long day, sun's shining, too good to be standing in the garage. Thanks for watching Tasty Ride Safe, see you next time. Now